Yeah. Can I start? Because of course. history. I'm just wondering whether okay. there, there are any plans. Obviously, during my time, we thought about that a lot because we're in the Premier League for so long. And the decision we took was when we have a waiting list for season tickets, right. for two or three years, we would consider doing it. Because I think from a commercial point of view, with 27 odd thousand, People when we were in the Premier League said, I have to buy a season ticket, otherwise I'm not going to guarantee getting in. At the moment, until you build the inherent support bigger than that, we don't ever want to get to a point really where people say, you know what, I'll pick and choose my matches, I'll go and watch Man U and Liverpool, we want them to buy season tickets. Second point is, we did get planning permission, as you know, to extend the ground, and I think that could be reactivated. But another consideration why we wanted this waiting list is to actually extend this ground is quite expensive. It's always more expensive to put another tier on a grandstand than starting from scratch. So all I would answer is I think financially it would be a big commitment and we'd want to be sure that we were selling out before making that decision, really. Yeah, I think we still have uh, our average last season was 16,000. So I understand if you're in the Premier League, it's probably easy filled. Well, let's hope, but obviously we're not there yet. <laughs> and I think uh, our, one of our biggest challenges for next year is, uh, well, to, to get more people into the grounds and see if we maybe have a more stable club uh, uh, performing level on the pitch, how much crowds we can attract on a general basis. And then obviously, the, uh, and then work from that, and then you can probably make, because in the last couple of years, it has been 16, 18,000, mm. which still leaves us with 10,000 people to look, go and look for. So for the moment, there is no need, I would say. <laughs> but hopefully, maybe within a couple of years, there is the need for it. And just to finish your point about spending on the ground, I mean, everybody's seen that it is a beautiful pitch. It's a very high-quality pitch. Um, but there's been money spent, I suppose you know, paint, new seats, yes, yes. new carpets throughout the, uh, the, the lounges which needed doing. And... Um, I have to say that in the years, the latter years I was here, and of course the years under uh, Tony Jimenez and Michael, money wasn't spent on the ground. We didn't have any spare money and our priority was always trying to get the old player in. And I think it's a real, to me, um, a necessary thing that some, an owner has come along and actually said, you know what, we've got to spend some money on the place we play as well. Well, I think when you come out the pitch, you see a large pristine stadium. It's Feel good, don't you? Know? Yeah, absolutely. Good. It's uh, how I try to convince players to sign. I bring them first to the valley. <laughs> and let them see them more money. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we'd all agree it was a bit too close for comfort last season. But uh, I think this year the league is even tougher because you've got clubs coming down from the Premier League with a lot of mm. money. Mm. Doncaster... And Barnsley and Yeovil, three of the smaller clubs have gone. Yeah. And I think the championship is increasingly going to be more competitive. Uh, clubs yeah. with a lot of financial resources. How confident are you that Charlton can compete in the short term and the long term with what we're up against? Um. Well, <laughs> well, I think uh, it was obviously not easy uh, after the season. We we let go a lot of players. We brought we managed by within one or half July we already brought in eight players. Uh, it will see. We we made the signings so far that we wanted to make. Um, our plan is to be competitive on the long run. Uh, as you can see, we invested. We gave some players uh, four to five year contracts. Uh, and uh, it's true that there are clubs with more money, but uh, not all of those clubs are successful either. And we have a different approach, all the fans know that. 
but we, we think nevertheless uh, we're very happy with the signings that we made and I mean we are we're doing it with a, a budget which is still one of the lowest of the championship and it will for us as well with so many new players it will be uh, interesting to see how good they gel but we we feel we we strengthened already the positions that we were lacking last season and um, we try to invest in those positions so. I think I'd agree with that. Have anybody been to Peterborough or Portsmouth? All right. I won't make up what I want. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> okay. Just wanted to say, as a fan now speaking, we played well. We, we played some lovely football now. We only got two goals on Saturday, although Jacko missed a penalty. Um, but we played a style of football which was really, really exciting. And I think we've got two or three players, and again, talking as a fan, I'm talking about the centre ball. I, I, as I get older, I can't pronounce names, but if I call them Igor and Johan, you'll know the two I mean. I think they're really, really exciting players who are going to turn the fans on. And in a way, that's part of football. You want the kids to go and say, oh, he was great. And... Um, since we sold Yan last year. Got to throw that in. We haven't got a hero, but I think there's a few in there who are going to become real heroes. Didn't really answer your question. I just believe, again, as a fan, I think we've got a better squad than last year. I think it's bigger in depth. The youngsters are all a year older. And um, where that will take us, how much better, you know, football you can never judge. But I think, generally, people should be confident that we can have a competitive side this year. Yeah. Glyn. Hi, um, can you elaborate on transfer policy and where that's going to go and how that fits into a plan to make Charlton Athletic success successful and where what is success, both for you guys as the board yeah. and, and the question. We What we mostly, our, our vision is for Charlton, is uh, if we see good young talent, we try to acquire them basically. It's a bit our philosophy and give them a place in our club. Uh, obviously, not you cannot only do it with young and you we have exp we brought in exp some experienced players as well, so it will be a mix of that. And uh, and as well develop the, the training ground and the academy, uh, so we have a good young players coming to the academy, also acquiring talent European talent, maybe some were some from from other countries than England, and that uh, mixed with experience of championship, and that's how we think we can be successful in in England here. And what is success? Well, <laughs> how, how do you create great success? What what is the five year plan, for example? Well, I mean, there is always the whole holy grail, <laughs> and everybody wants that, and we know that. I mean, we are no different than any other club. I mean, every club in Championship ever wants to be in Premier League, but I think uh, for the owner now as well, it will be a very interesting season for him to see how far this squad can take us, basically. And then I think we will assess the situation. I think that's that's for us because we had a fresh start now and see how how this squad can develop and what is needed more uh, um, to go maybe up but I mean I want to be very careful with this because uh, it's such a difficult league and we know that so I I don't feel comfortable here promising you that in the, within five years we mm. want to be in Premier League no, no, because no. it's it's I, it's I football it's I not and that's a bit, uh, but obviously uh, the ambition of every every club is that. Huh? More questions. A lady can ask a question. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Yes. How come we got another new manager? How come? Because yeah. I thought Jose uh, did really well last season. Yeah. He kept us up. Why did we get rid of him? Because he wanted to go to Blackpool. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the first thing is just to answer one question, then Katrine probably knows it more intimately than I do, but I think the point people have forgotten is, because people say, oh, two managers have been sacked you know, in six months. Jose wasn't sacked. He was hired to do, for four months, he was asked, could you do a job for us to get us to stay up? Seven weeks. Or seven weeks, sorry. Yeah, it wasn't in four months. He said, yes, I'd like to do it and I'd like to try it. No promises at the end of it, nothing else. Then at the end of it, he survived and I think he did a good job and won over the fans with his style of football and a very nice man as well. But you can remember, there was no commitment to him. We knew he could do the job. 
then it's the owner's job to interview the potential people and make his judgment on who will be best for Charlton. And I'll just say one thing, I think Bob will win you over. He certainly won me over. I think he's a real live wire. He likes to play good football as well. You live all day by these decisions, you know. I mean, he only wants us to be successful and therefore he's made his best judgment. I like to be successful, but it's like, I've been watching Charlton since I was nine years old. Yes. And uh, <laughs> we've had some really good managers and we've had some crap managers. But you know what? I'm thinking... Is he a crap one or a good one? But you see, it, the biggest one for all is, and I take blame for this, when I appointed Alan Pardew, I got hundreds, more letters than I've ever had more texts saying, well done, Richard, you made the best choice, fantastic, didn't ever think we'd be able to tempt Pardew, da, 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 da. You talk to people now, I say, Pardew, worst manager we've ever had. So it's, it's very difficult to know, are they good or bad? McLaren, you know, some people think he's the worst thing since slash bread. Other things, people, Derby think he's wonderful. He's done emails, they've done, he done them all right last season. Yeah, but Wally with the Brelly, you know, you remember? Yeah, yeah, so they go up and down. <laughs> I'd say, no, no, I'm not looking. What I'm saying is, you never quite know, but Jose did the job for us and he did a good job, but he wasn't fired. If he'd been offered on, when he joined us an 18 month contract, I'm sure the owner would have honoured it because he'd done his job. But you got to realise, I will say this, Roland would probably shoot me, but Roland and I are getting on a bit. Roland's the owner now. And he hasn't got 20 years to make his mark. He's got a number of years. Who knows how many? But you know what I mean. So he would want to do over the next five years or whatever. And therefore, he's got to carefully pick who he believes will do the best job. He's not a prophet, so we don't know whether he'll get it right, but his intentions, I promise you, are good. I, I mean, uh, he, I said to him, uh, uh, because I explained, and, and I said, well, uh, if we go with a new manager, I mean, obviously there is a, people will maybe not understand. And he explained uh, that he he worked with so many people over so many for so many years, and he's a and he explained that we should trust him. And he's sometimes you might be wrong, and also in football for sure. But I mean, Bob hasn't started yet. There was also lots of criticism when Jose first came into yeah. the building. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I really hope that we will have the same outcome. So uh, I mean, and, and and that the owner is proven right. I guess so. Uh, yeah. um, it's also for me. But so far, I have been working with Bob quite closely, and uh, and I think we already had some successes with uh, all the signings getting so early done. Uh, so and now it's up to him, obviously, to 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 give you all an answer what you deserve on the pitch. And I mean, I hope it starts next uh, Saturday in Brentford. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gentleman in the corner. Sorry, you mentioned uh, Bob Peters uh, and that he won you over. So, what was your sort of checklist? What, what no, no, he didn't win me over. He's won me over now, well, having worked with him, but I, I was not involved in the interview process. No. Yeah, when he's sitting the opposite side of the table, you know, what was your checklist of, his, of the attributes you were looking for? How did he win you over? And when you said, you know, he likes to play good football. What does good football look like? Uh, well, when I say football, football on the uh, grass. I mean, we. On the new pitch. One, of the, one of the reasons he was very keen that we had a new pitch, that's the way he wants to play. You know, other managers quite happy with, you know, knock it up to the big man up front. That is not Bob's style. And you will notice that our key centre forward is well under six foot, although he's got quite a good leap for an average sized man. So I think he likes to play good football. Second thing I've noticed is he's a motivational sort of guy. He really is. He's quite large in life, very energetic, and seems to have just that balance of banter with the players, but they know who's boss, you know, and, and that's a fine line. We've had a number of those. Right? To be fair, I think Chris was very good at man management as well, but I think this guy is. And um, and he's very tough. Like, he's always on my back. Where are my players? Where are my players? <laughs> oh, uh, well, like that. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 that's true. <laughs> yeah. Do you sign in the pipeline? <laughs> 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 yeah. in, in general, we don't communicate about transfers because it can jeopardize, yeah. obviously, uh, if we're in competition with other clubs or, or so. Uh, I think for the moment we're quite happy with the squad, but we still look for talent and if we, we find 
players that are available. There are, for, I think, two positions which we think can use some strength. And we're looking at those players, but we still have a month now, which is a very comfortable position. Uh, we have some people targeted, but uh, I mean, I cannot promise you that there will be no players because it's a, it's a difficult game, especially if, as we are progressing towards the deadline. It means more clubs are throwing more money and the pressure is on. So uh, we'll see where we end, but we know. And uh, if not, we still have the loan system, but I want to reduce as much as possible the loan system during because it's also for the owner. It makes sense to invest players that are your own. Yeah. Uh, so. You mentioned uh, the progression of the younger players throughout the squad. Is that the idea why so we're investing in players from standard age and further abroad to encourage the youngsters to come on? Because um. we are sort of, I noticed over the summer we are getting a bit of like foreign intake now, other than sort of progressing through the squad that we come well, I think like, we have lots of players from the academy in the current team. Yeah, well, one well, can we, but I think just your point, yes, we're going to have more foreign players than we had in the past, that's for sure. And the reason is that we now have a scouting system through the network whereby we have access to people we hadn't even heard of before. And I think that's good because premiership clubs all have that advantage. So we have it. Number two, I think you're saying all these players coming from Standard Liège. It's interesting, our two probably biggest signings this year haven't come from there. Igor and um, Johan, yeah, first name <laughs> terms again. They were from outside. So that's quite interesting. Williams, who I think you're like our central midfielder, the same haircut as me. Um, <laughs> he's going to be a crowd favourite. We've got him on a wonderful... For some reason, there was something, won't go into it, but something not too important happened at Standard Liège, whereby he became available. Normally, that quality of player, I don't think we'd have just been given by Standard Liège. So that's a real bonus. But I think in January, you have a good argument. We took in a lot of players, some were good enough, some weren't, and they all came from Standard Liège. But that's because it was needs must. That, that was the only source where we had any influence. So I think this summer, we really picked who you wanted to pick. Yeah, yeah. And we had a good balance, and I think yeah. I foresee that as well in the future. I mean, having a good balance between, because it's an opportunity for me, it's an opportunity to have access to players where you can get deals easily done, because it's the same family, but uh, also have the mix of uh, the likes like Igor and, and, and Johan. Uh, and sometimes, I mean, also financially, we cannot always afford the players that we bring in. Yeah. And that gives us a good balance. And that means that we can invest more in Igor and the likes of Johan and other players. I think what should be encouraging, I'm a fairness because Roland's not here and uh, it's easier for me. There's no more I don't have to report back. Absolutely. <laughs> no, no message for us here. But Roland owns six clubs. All six clubs have got passionate fans. You know, some bigger quantity than others, but they've all got passionate fans. And they all want the owner to do best for them. So that puts him politically or, you know, in a very difficult position. Anything he says is going to be analysed. Ah, oh, a standard Liège's favourite team, a chant his favourite team, doesn't it? So you're not going to get answered to him, and quite rightly, because he'll get slaughtered at the other five clubs. Yeah. But let just me say one thing. The opportunities for Charlton Athletic are probably bigger than for any of these other six clubs, and that's just because of the league system we work within, that there is the Premier League up there. And that gives me a lot of confidence that we are always going to be pretty high on his priority list for being looked after. Because just the rewards are bigger. And, and any sensible person would see that. And other, otherwise it's our job to remind him to look after Yeah, yeah, maybe we will remind him. Yeah. Um, that's an interesting... <laughs> <laughs> that's in there. <laughs> <laughs> What's that Murray said? <laughs> Good. Yeah. Right. Apart from the playing side of things, how, what plans have you got for getting the crowds back in? Because mm. even when we go through periods of playing quite well, um, like at the beginning of last season, we were playing okay, we were scoring goals, but mm. we were playing okay, but we're not getting the crowds in. And mm -hmm. no, it's without a, that, you yeah. have, you're not 
you're not bringing in the income anyway mm. to the club. It's what I, that's, I analyzed a bit the figures and what I saw over the last couple of years that we have a maximum of 18,000 average even though you play well or you played well in League One and in Championship. So it's a challenge, I, I admit, but I mean where we foresee the future is to become a, a family club. So we'll try to uh, really try to get families in with uh, young kids into the ground and provide them a, a good environment and a, a, a nice environment to come to the football. I think that's a bit where our future lays as well, is trying to get, and there we will work together with, uh, with the trust as well because they reach out to so many young people and um, they already offer such a, a good environment for young people to spend their free time and I think the, with the trust we will work together to bring in also do, bring on also those kids into to the Charlton ground and make them Charlton fans basically. Yeah, they, they used to have um, a thing mm -hmm. where we either did kids for a quick or I think we, we used to sit in the East stand and when there were empty seats they used to give the tickets to the local schools. Mm. Now the last couple of years I haven't noticed. Yeah but there is a de balance there to be made because then you devaluate the ticket season holders as yeah, well. But, uh, you're not doing it all the time. No. For certain matches. That we are going to have certain special events. No I know but it's uh, yeah we cannot do it all the time because yeah. we yeah. don't want... Yeah, I but there is, a, I mean, we went through a restructure uh, after the season, which was not nice, but uh, one of the positions that we hired was club development and, and a position, a, a lady that will really try to bring uh, more people or young people into the, to the grounds, actually. I mean, I, it's a very good question, but I think something which should be acknowledged, and I'll do it because Katrine was the person who really pushed the owner on this. She managed to get us to reduce our income in effect by reducing season ticket prices. Whereby I don't know if anybody's aware, I think we're now the cheapest club in London. No, and that includes yeah. Brentford, Leighton Orient. I know. You know. Have we how many extra season tickets? Well a few more but first we've got to make it cheaper. Then you've got to try and play good football on the pitch. I know. After that you've got a slight problem because one of the problems we have in this world as everybody knows is, you know We've become a celebrity culture where it's, oh, who just built Man U or Man City? You know, it's all got to be a success, and um, we're fighting against that. Uh, yeah, and maybe there is still some scepticism about the ownership, and that's, I mean, why yeah, I, yeah. I, I want to do these events, because I, I want to explain, basically, because I've been trying to figure out why didn't we sell yet all the season tickets that we sold last year, although we, I think we have exciting things going on. Uh, so I still try to well convince people to get a season ticket, uh, but probably it will have to wait until we start playing to a certain extent. We win the first six matches. Yeah, you you're right. right. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> and talking about the scepticism of the owner, the the sort of feedback I get from from talking to fans and the fans that give to me is around you know, team selection, both in terms of who plays match by match and all that. Now, I, I have my own opinions in things like that with the experience I've got with work, working football and, and knowing Richard. Can you explain to the fans exactly what's gone in the past and what is the future? You know, one of the things that uh, British fans is they like a manager to be, pick the team. They don't understand necessarily that head coach is a manager in terminology. Can you explain exactly what's going on with regards to who's choosing the players we're signing, who's choosing the players match by match, by match and what influence the owner can have over that? Okay, uh, I will give you an insight. <laughs> no, how we select players is, I think, we have a, a scout here in England who scouts uh, the best players Phil available. Chappell, just Phil Chappell. Yeah. He's a very, I work with him very closely, so he selects players which he thinks is, are good for the club. Uh, based on quality, budget, and because we, we need to have an idea of the budget. And then um, we get a double check by other scouts from the network. And if that's a yes and a yes, the player, we go for the player, but it doesn't always work out. And it's the same way around. Sometimes our scouts from uh, the network, they see good players. Um, we have them checked by Phil Chappell. If it's a yes, a yes, we try to go and get for the player. So that's actually, obviously, the manager also has a, a say in it. So we always double check, but it, it needs to be a yes, a yes of the two scouts. 
then uh, we go to the manager and say, look, this is a player that we spotted. Do you like him? Do you see him in, in our team? Because sometimes we, we see so many talent. And then, I mean, we cannot take it because the, the manager likes to play a certain way and it, it doesn't fit. We, are, we, we had it this summer. I mean, we were wanting to go for one of the players and um, it doesn't fit in Bob's system. So then, I mean, we have to adapt our strategy. So if that's all done, then it's up to me to start the negotiation and I negotiate the players and sometimes they're successful and sometimes they're not. And uh, for picking the team, it's uh, the owner is not involved. <laughs> but uh, the only thing that, that he has a say in, and it's quite rightly, is if uh, we go for a player, a transfer of a player, and there is really big money involved, obviously he needs to have a say in it. But that's it. That's it. And I think, just to remove a myth, because I don't know who created it, but, but it developed its own steam about Roland picking the team for Chris and Chris not being happy, therefore walking out. That was not the case, I can tell you. What the owner did do, and maybe this did upset Chris, who knows, he did, uh, Chris would come back and say, yeah, we've lost again, or whatever, uh, it's our need replacements. Roland would say, yeah, but what about these guys I've sent over? They're not bad. Why isn't he playing? Why isn't he playing? So, but anybody would question that. If you're picking up the wages and you've sent them over, whether they're good enough on, or not, you aren't going to ask. If Chris had been winning all those matches, it would have helped his argument say, not good enough with me, I'm happy with my existing team. But he was really ringing up saying, I need reinforcements. We got reinforcements, probably not good enough, I accept that. And then Roland, of course, says, you lost again, you didn't pick my reinforcements, what's wrong with them? So it was that sort of question which I think, if you're winning, you can be robust in your answer. If you're losing, it becomes difficult. So I'm not saying Chris's life was easy, but Roland was not picking the team. He was questioning afterwards, well, didn't we win? <laughs> which all of us do. Um, sorry. Next one. Um, what plan is in action for the younger players? I mean, we've lost Poirier to West Ham uh, over the years. We've lost uh, Parker, we've played the children with Jenkins. And, and for the next time... Uh, well, I've, got, I've got to take back some of that. Parker, everybody in football says, we did the most amazing deal ever. We got £10 million at the time for a guy who said he didn't want to play for us again and, in fact, had said to Kirchley, I'm not even turning up at the training pitch. So when you're given that, that the guy's gone on strike. To get still 10 million, I think you should be saying, well done. The only guy I can think, Jenkinson, got one and a half million pounds, plus there's more add-ons and we get sold again. Fantastic for a guy who only played, I think, six games for us. You, where you are absolutely right is on Poirier. Poirier is a good player. He had not signed a, a long-term contract with us, so we're still going to get a fee and we're going to get uh, a share of a transfer fee as and when he decides West Ham are not the right club for passing football. Um, <laughs> so we can do that, but to be fair, if you're going to be critical, you've got to say the previous ownership should have spotted that Poirier, Poirier is a rare talent, sign him up. The great thing about Katrina and her team is they've seen all of our youngsters and I think they're all signed up. Gomez, of course, only has two years. We'd like it to be longer, mm. but that's something which is being looked at. But generally, all of our youngsters are tied up on long-term contracts, I believe. Is that not true? Well, uh, we tried to tie them in as long as possible. So, yeah. I, I mean, I was obviously not happy with the Poyet situation, but it was very clear that it, he was not going to sign. I mean, uh, we tried our best, but, I mean, it's unfortunate. But, I mean, I will do now, or we will try to do it now, to prevent that, basically, and also I think it will help. I mean, <laughs> I, if we were a more stable club at the time as well, maybe we can, could, could convince Diego to stay, although I think his mind has always been somewhere else. Uh, well, obviously, I'm not speaking for him, but I just think from what I saw. Um, but it, it will be my my next big thing, is to get to really the key young players that we already identified in the club to get them on long enough contracts so we don't have the same situation as Diego. I mean, with some of it, it will work. With some of them, they already know that they're quite good and they calculate, OK, by the time mm -hmm. I'm a free agent so I can do the big move without the club having to pay a fee. But what I, yeah, I mean, I will try to convince them of the Charlton story and, uh, I mean, and, and say that they have the perfect platform here. And uh, if I, yeah, and hopefully it will work with most of them. We know the players that we want to keep, 
but yeah, we need to convince the parents, uh, the agents involved, the players themselves. But I think from, I mean, and that's the best argument that we had last year. We played so many academy players and Absolutely. if we keep continuing to do that, they know they have a shot with us. And then if we then have to sell them, because I mean, I don't want to be the person that prohibits a young player from progressing his career. And that's what I, I keep telling the player. And I told the same to Diego, I said, even if you resign with us, I mean, then there is a point that Charlton is too small for you. I mean, I will not the one, be the one that, that will stop you because it's only fair to young players. They only have one shot. But uh, I mean, <coughs> yeah, he, he chose differently. So.